Hey everyone, this is Kieran from Eccentric Physio. Today's exercise is about the posterior deltoid. So that's the muscle back here. It's one of those three deltoids where we have the anterior, the front deltoid, the middle deltoid, not medial, but middle, and then the posterior deltoid, this one on the back here. It's a muscle that should be addressed and developed in really any shoulder um, rehab program, but particularly in shoulder injuries that uh, involve the back muscles, so like the posterior cuff. So if you've had any issues with dislocations where your arm's been gone that way, or issues where you have trouble going across like this or this, then this is gonna be a really useful exercise for you. So with the um, deltoids, no, remembering that um, they're innervated, well, they get the nerve supply as a motor nerve from the axial nerve. And so what that means is the muscles all have the same innervation, but because the fiber orientation is different, they do different jobs. Now the posterior deltoid is going to horizontally AB duct. It's gonna go backwards. It's also got an angle of pull for some external rotation and can do a little bit of extension down in here. Whereas our anterior deltoid, the one at the front, is more about pressing movements, and our middle deltoid is a little bit more about raising the arm up to the side, or you know, br bracing or buttressing against things this way. Um, it's a muscle that is going to sort of sit as that cap on top of the back of the shoulder over some of those um, sort of rotator cuff muscles, infraspinatus, some of the teres muscles, and cover a bit of that sort of the triceps insertions through the back there. It's a muscle that needs to be developed. You need to have some sort of, not necessarily symmetry, but there needs to be a nice balance of push to pull ratio in your rehab program. So say you have pain with pushing, you also need to address pulling. Now, it's a bit tricky with this muscle because based on positionings that you need to get into to do this movement, you might do something like a face pull. Not a bad option, really gonna develop those muscles. But if we want to bias those muscles, then we want to take away some of the other pulling muscles so that these guys have to do most of the work. And one of the main things we can do is take out the spinal erectors a bit and put them in a lengthened position, and that's going to change their ability to contribute. So basically, if I flex forward and hunch forward like this, that means that they're unable to create as much stability as if I were here. And so from the side, basically I'm gonna sit like this and I'm gonna hold the weights where my hands are and I'm gonna lift up this way. So if I bring this weight here so you can see, I'm pulling that way, okay? By bending um, the elbow, it's just gonna reduce that lever arm. It's quite a lot of extra weight if I try and keep the elbows straight. But if I keep the elbow bent like this, it's gonna be a little more doable and achievable and arguably more appropriate. It's a muscle that's not super long, right? We don't need to ask it to work way, I mean, how often would you pull something that way if you had the choice of pulling this way? So, dumbbells are gonna to touch to start, and then you're just gonna try and bring your elbows up to the sky. And by doing this, already, I'm getting a bit of fatigue into those delt muscles, posterior delt. And of course, there's other muscles working too, but because I'm working more in that horizontal AB duction here, I'm gonna be biasing a bit more of those posterior delts. So a really nice exercise to just hit them easily and straight away. Start a little conservatively, even if you think you got quite a bit of strength, so that's six kilos, and I can already feel them. Remembering that you're taking away some of the contribution of other muscles that help with pulling, and you're being a little more specific on those delts by being here. And so by lessening the weight, you'll probably have to do less like jerky momentum and you can be a little more pure in the shoulder movement and get that sort of hypertrophy response by fatiguing the muscle. Keep reps kind of around sort of, you know, within the 10 to 20-ish mark. You could jump up to 30 if you wanted. Um, we know that from some of the research now, if I have hypertrophy is the goal, getting the muscle bigger, then you just need to experience fatigue. It doesn't necessarily matter if it's a heavy weight 
or a lightweight. Now, if it's very, very light, like 30 plus reps, that gives a different response and not necessarily the hypertrophy response. But if you keep it in that sort of almost like six to 30, which is quite a range, I know, but if you can keep it in there and experience fatigue, then if it's a lightweight and you're lifting upwards of 20 to 30 reps, or if it's a heavier weight and you're lifting like six to 10 reps and you experience fatigue, you're still gonna get hypertrophy. Um, so just keep that in mind, knowing that if you do less reps, the workout takes not as long. So that might be a, something to think about. Um, and just thinking again about that technique of bending over, elbows to the sky, and I'm not trying to have a weight be so heavy that I need to create momentum through my spine because then all of a sudden that stuff's helping and it's taking away the focus of here. You can work on the skill of pulling and getting the spine involved with other things like a cable row um, or more advanced things like a, like a pull-up. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.